So I'm making some liquid soap today. The main difference is that you use potassium hydroxide to make liquid soap instead of sodium hydroxide. I'm making it hot process. I believe that you can make cold process liquid soap that people don't usually and I've not done it that way before. This is potassium hydroxide flakes, 90% pure. So that's pretty much dissolved and it feels hot. When I find my spatula. There we are. It doesn't matter about getting air bubbles in, the same way it would with solid soap. Most people make it in a slow cooker or a crock pot. I haven't got one. I haven't even blended it yet. I've just stirred it now. The memory card on my phone filled up. So I've had to delete some things off it. And that's what happened while I was doing it. But it curdles a lot. Um, so it made with potassium hydroxide. Just see what the temperature is. 92. So it's gone up. The last time I took it with that all in, it was 80. A lot of liquid soap recipes take ages to trace, even at such a high temperature. <laughs> So this is a few minutes later, so this came to trace very quickly. It's a new recipe that I've just devised. It's got um, coconut oil in it. I'm trying to get my glove back on, I just had to turn the camera on on my phone. I had to turn it off because I can't keep recording because I haven't got enough space on my memory card. So it's only about five minutes later. Got to keep stirring it <laughs> because I don't want it burning on the bottom of the pan. I think I'll turn the temperature down actually. Only on number two. So hot process soap goes through various stages. The last time I made this. I made it with castor oil, coconut oil and olive oil and it took forever to reach trace and this has just um, gone very quickly in only a few minutes. That may be because of the heat. I'm going to get rid of this. Potassium hydroxide doesn't form such strong bonds as sodium hydroxide, so it keeps splitting apart. So this recipe is coconut oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, grapeseed oil and castor oil. If it's got a good lather then I'm going to stick with this recipe because it's um, worked very quickly. I kind of dread making um, liquid soap because it takes so long. 
standing over the stove. <laughs> you can leave it to cook, but then you end up with um, burnt soap on the bottom of the pan and I don't want that. Take it off the heat. I'm going to have to use the blender to get that back down. I don't make hot process very often. This is nearly done now. I was not expecting it to be so quick. That happened when I made my um, Aleppo style soap as well. Went much more quickly than I thought. So, my salt paste is done, hopefully. So now I'm going to test a little bit. So you need to test the pH of it. I'm pretty sure this is soap anyway, because it smells like soap. And it's going here, look at that, green. I could probably do with a more concentrated paste. Yeah. That's definitely soap already. It's done. There's the um So it's between eight and nine. So what I need to do now is weigh the paste. This is the paste that's made. So I need to weigh the paste and then I need to put it in another container and dilute it. You need to dilute it either with deionized water or distilled water. We can't easily get distilled water here so I use deionized water and then add a solution of borax. So there's my soap paste in my jam pot. There's no need to worry about it now going in cooking utensils because the soap's already formed. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm diluting it with deionized water. And uh, there's two and a half litres in each of these containers. And I got them for a pound each. They usually cost more than that, but they were on special offer. So I got a lot while they were on special offer because it's what I use for making soap and also lotions, although I don't, I don't make so much lotion. And so you can see it's lovely and bubbly there, that soap. You're supposed to um, boil the water. So that it's sterile. 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the water with the soap in it and cook it again um, so that it's all sanitised shall we say it's not really possible to sterilise things in a home environment so that's what I'm going to do I'm very pleased with how bubbly that soap is so I shall definitely use that recipe again it was 30% coconut oil, 5% castor oil, 20% sunflower oil, 5% grapeseed oil, and the rest was olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. There's too many unsaponifiables in pomace oil, which is good in bar soap because it nourishes the skin, but it makes liquid soap cloudy, so you don't want to use it. You have to use distilled or de deionised water because the impurities in tap water make the soap go cloudy. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my lid on, then I'm going to make my borax solution. So the borax reduces the pH to make it skin safe, stabilises the bonds in the soap so it doesn't split apart so easily, which is an issue with liquid soap because potassium hydroxide doesn't form such strong bonds as sodium hydroxide and it also acts as a preservative. You don't necessarily need to put a preservative in liquid soap but many people do but if you use borax rather than boric acid or citric acid to bring down the pH uh, then the borax acts as a preservative as well. It has other benefits to it. So here is my big pan of soap, this is a day after I made it, Look how bubbly it is, it's fantastic. So I've weighed that. Because I'm giving it to my friend and I want to add fragrance to it. And I need to know how much fragrance to add at 2%. I'll add the fragrance in the morning when the bubbles have subsided a little bit. I can't believe how bubbly that soap is, I'm so happy. So, all of that soap is from one kilogram of oils. So here's my soap. I'm very pleased with it. The borax the borax brought down the pH to just below it. 